Show the week! TV! What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Rody. I'm here with another album review for you guys, and this time it's Atlanta's own Snowman, a.k.a. Jeezy, with his new album, Trap or Die 3. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. It's the Ten Crack Commandments. Wow. One, two, uh. Alright guys, welcome back. So this album is actually something that was more of a surprise to me. I didn't know that Jeezy was dropping something until last week when I was watching his Breakfast Club interview and he said, yo, I got my new album coming out soon. I was like, well damn, I felt like I just interviewed your last album, Church in These Streets, which you can check it out and put the link up here or up here or in the description. Y'all go check that out. And I was actually looking forward to this because I feel like based on the interview, Jeezy was going back to a little bit to his real roots, especially with his former producers. Um, you know, he's going to be back in the studio with Shardy Red, who's a guy that he's produced a lot of trap beats and hits with Jeezy. So this was taking a step back to his roots again, why he called it Trap or Die 3. He's had Trap or Die mixtapes in the past, which have been more to his critically acclaimed mixtapes. So he decided to turn the mixtape to an album. You know what I'm saying? He said that before. So a lot of the songs on here were actually a surprise to me. On my first go through the album, I was like, ugh. I don't really know how I like it, but I had to sit down and I actually ended up playing the album while playing some Gears of War. And man, that whole that changed my whole introspect on his album, man. I mean, listening to this album, you do hear the same type of tempo, cadence, rhyme style with that hard trap beat, you know, that Jeezy's famous for. At a certain point, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So he's sticking to that same type of rapping style, which at this point is Jeezy's claim to fame. So it sounds good. But at first I was like, man, this is I'm not really enjoying this. And then I was like, you know what? Let me give it another run through. So on Gears of War, I'm bumping it. And the first song, G Wack. Classic Jeezy beat, triumphant sound, horns, same old, dun, dun, just it's the same type of sound. But he's he's talking that talk again. He's talking that Jeezy talk and he's he's making things, making you get into that realm of the darkness and, and the gritty streets. And I think that's why I liked it more while I was playing the game Gears of War game, because it just fit that that, that, that it fit that environment. And that's really important with some music. You gotta play it in the right environment. Like, you're not gonna listen to Luther Vandross while you out in the corner slinging nickel bags and nine bags. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna listen to Jeezy. So, some songs you gotta play in the right environment. So, I think Gears of War is a perfect setting for Jeezy. And to be honest, the next four or five songs were great. It is what it is, where it at, all there, going crazy, about that. Those are all songs that sound amazing. And to be honest, my favorite song might be the one with Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne low-key killed this song, and he did, he came in and out. It was like it was like I was listening to the Carter II Lil Wayne. He was rapping, it wasn't nothing crazy, he wasn't using too much of the reverb and the voice alter and stuff, he sounded dope. And I really appreciated that because that's the kind of Wayne that I really attracted to back in college when I really started getting into him on his mixtape days. So it was dope to see Jeezy have Wayne jump on there. Yo Gotti jumped on a song, it was called Where That. Yo Gotti and Jeezy are pretty much two slices of bread in the same loaf. Like, they are great together. They work well. Jeezy actually got outdid by Yo Gotti, in my opinion, because Yo Gotti just sounded good on this beat. It's not taking anything away from Jeezy because Jeezy sounded great. I do think Jeezy's lyrics were a little corny. Um, he was, you'll listen to the song and you'll hear a little bit of the rhymes. It's like, I'm not even gonna get into it, but some of the lyrics were a little corny. The rhyming wasn't that on par, so I had to, you know, take a little check mark on that. My favorite hardcore song on this album is actually called Goldmine. It's such a dope kind of, again, triumphant song. It goes hard. I think this is a single that he could release out that could be heavy in the club scene, as well as something you can just bump when you're working out. These Jeezy albums can be really, really good for uplifting and pushing you in more of an aggressive way. You know, sometimes you have that music that's motivating and you just, oh, that sounds so good. But this is, again, it's that thug motivation type of music that's gonna be hard and you're gonna like the way it sounds in certain settings. So it's very important that you realize that when you are listening to this album because first go rounds through, you may kind of be felt back like, oh, this is not what I thought it was gonna be. But then you gotta remember where Jeezy's mindset is at now. He's not trying to be church in these streets, Jeezy. He's trying to be Lil J from back in the day that was on the corner and running with, you know, Black Mafia family. So he's really rapping aggressive and hard and drug talk, and it sounds good. Not gonna lie, Jeezy has never been better than how he sounds right now on this album. I think my uh, least favorite song is probably the one with uh, Plies. And it's just because I'm not a huge Plies fan, but again, it may be good to use called Sexy. Um, it's just about women and Plies talking crazy like you do on Instagram. Uh, the song with Chris Brown, which will most likely be a single because it's Chris Brown. You can't really go wrong with it. Uh, it sounds pretty good, pretty diamonds, you know, sound of the strip club song. So 
I, I, at the end of the day, this is actually a pretty solid album. I'm not going to lie. I think it starts off really well, and it just continues to escalate on up, man. I mean, it really has a strong, strong beginning and middle to this album. His features are perfect. French Montana did a great job on his song. I really liked it. I'm not going to lie. This Jeezy album is really solid. It's strong. It's a good way to go into the winter. I mean, it's got the hard beats, but it's also got some uh, slow, good jam songs, like a Chris Brown song. And he's not talking about no lovey-dovey shit. That's not Jeezy's lane. He's still talking that slick drug talk, but at the same time, he's got the good mellow ride to it, so it can fit into that song. And I did appreciate that for this album. So all in all, I do think you guys should check this out. This Trap or Die 3 album is something that you should listen to. It's very good. Jeezy did a good job coming back from the Church in the Streets album. That album had a little bit of hiccups in my opinion. He was trying to be something different. And I think he came back to his roots on this album. And I think everybody's going to appreciate that. And this is just going to be another great Jeezy album that's going to go on rotation. So you guys let me know down below what you think of this review and with the album. And I'll keep these reviews coming. And I'll see y'all the next time. Let's go Indians. I'll see y'all. Peace.